My name's Chad Draw with Chad's Walking with Wildlife. And this guy, who you can't see right now, is a Kistradon Contortrix, or the Eastern Copperhead. Now this guy is a very venomous snake. Believe it or not, out of all the venomous snakes in Northern Texas, I'm sure I don't put my knee on another one, this is actually one of the lesser venomous snakes. Now what I mean by that is if you get bit by this, you're gonna have a bad day. So don't get bit by this snake. But between the Eastern Copperhead um, the cottonmouth, also known as the water moccasin, or the worst, the eastern diamondback rattlesnake. This one is the lesser of the three. This one gives about 100 milligrams of um, hemotoxic venom. Hemotoxic means it's attacking your blood cells, it's attacking your vascular system. It'll also uh, be necrotic to any cells around the bite area. Same as the other two as well, but out of the three, this one tends to be less fatal. It's actually, on the rare side, a fatal bite. Um, obviously, you'd want to seek medical attention, especially if you have an anaphylactic uh, reaction to this or um, you have some sort of underlying health issue. If you were to get uh, a strike from this snake, you would be in for a very bad day. I am going to do my very best to not get bit by this snake today. I do not want to go to the hospital. It does require a hospital visit. Um, and you are going to need to be pumped full of anti-venom. Now the Eastern Copperhead is a very abundant snake for the venomous snakes here in Texas. It lives on the Eastern side, pretty much the Southeast part of the United States, up into the 13 colonies, um, up into the New England area, Massachusetts, New Jersey area all the way down here into the northern and eastern into the southeast end of Texas and then found throughout the south there. Kind of cuts along Tennessee in that. Now you'll see this beautiful pattern. I'm going to bring them to you guys. Um, actually, he's laying here. I'm going to grab the camera and bring it to this guy and then we're going to take a beautiful look at this snake. The snake likes to hold still. It freezes. Um, so I'm pretty confident I can go to the camera, get it, come back, and this snake will not have moved. In fact, I'm not even going to cut the shot, um, and I'll show you guys. What's a very unique thing about this snake is it has a very unique style with its tail. Also, water moccasins do this, but it'll vibrate its tail when it's in the leaf litter at any time, but in the leaf litter, it'll sound like a rattlesnake. At least that's its attempt. Out of all the snakes that do that that are not a rattlesnake, this guy will actually vibrate at the fastest... Um, what would you call it? RPMs, basically? Basically, rounds per minute. I guess you could call it TPMs, ticks per minute. Every time it goes back and forth, Woo he got me jumping. <laughs> I was not expecting that. Woo! All right. <laughs> so they can, they can bite, which is hilarious, because if you look to where I'm at, at this angle, um, I wasn't expecting him to do that at that distance. I'm actually six inches away from, no, I'm just kidding. I'm three feet from them. They can bite about three quarters of their body length. And from front to back, this guy is a foot, foot and a half that he can strike. So I'm, I'm well outside of the strike zone right now. Um, it'll still get you anytime a snake opens its mouth towards your face. So I'm going to grab the camera, but I'm gonna place this guy in between us really quick, and I'm gonna push him back just a little bit. Please bite this, buddy. Okay. Oh, beautiful coloration on the bottom. Okay, we're just gonna move them. Just a little bit. Right up over there. There you go, buddy. Okay. okay. Back and away. Wow, so we saw a couple snakes already. This is the second one. We've only walked five minutes on this trail. Hilarious. Um, and the uh, second one we found, the first one was a lot more docile. And I got to mess with her for about 12 tries at picking her up, but she was in the vines and I couldn't scoop her out. And I was telling myself, I was like, man, this is a very docile snake. I'm actually kind of surprised at how, uh, how, uh, how much they allow me to mess with them before. But I was like, I'm not going to get complacent. I don't work with the snake much. Any moment they can bite. As you can see here, this one is much more agitated. He's in the open, he doesn't have cover like the other one did. So this one already feels vulnerable. 
and so we are going to run on a bike path so i'm trying to make sure when we have hikers or people on the bike path coming by uh that they have that so um somebody's coming <laughs> so i'm gonna move the camera while they're coming and you guys get to enjoy this snake so again the eastern copper Behind the camera, here we go, we're gonna go for a ride. What a gorgeous snake this is. And the nice thing is this snake, again, tends to freeze instead of run, which is nice. So I can kind of work with this snake a little bit. In fact, Copperhead might quickly become one of my favorite snakes to work with. Gorgeous little snake here. I'll zoom in a little bit for you guys. Since I'm behind the camera, you can see the strike pose here. Let me get in a little closer. You can see it in that perfect S curve, ready to go. Beautiful coloration on this snake. Again, very venomous. Not the most venomous, but still not a snake you would want to take a bite from. That, I can promise you. But let's go ahead, I'm gonna move around and kind of use my little pointer stick to point some things out. Now as I move, watch the snake turn right there. You can see it turn already facing me. So look at this coloration right here. So you guys can see the brown right here, almost a black color and then a light tan. Super good in the leaf litter. Um, absolutely phenomenal. This snake is uh, a very, very good hunter. Has great success. The amount of prey that this animal eats is actually pretty, I would say inspiring to, to just see how wide of a variety this particular snake has. Its main food items are anywhere from insects to small mammals, such as mice, uh, voles, they'll even hunt birds, has very unique hunting styles. So when it comes to insects, um, it's been known to not even use its fangs to bite the insects. It'll just grab onto them. Uh, it's, one of its favorite foods is a caterpillar. Uh, another one is cicadas. Cicadas are another great food item for this particular snake. Uh, they like to hunt, this one where we found it was right by the base of a tree where they like to hunt for um, many different animals. It's a very ambush predator. As you can see, it'll hold still, not move, freezes very well. Man, look at this guy. Hasn't even stuck its tongue out to smell. It's just ready to strike. The nice big spider right by the camera there. So this guy right here, when he comes to hunting insects, again, doesn't always use its fangs. Doesn't really need to. It'll just grab on, bite it, squeeze down, it'll actually eat it while it's alive. When it comes to small rodents, such as voles and mice, it'll tend to strike, envenomate, it'll stop, it'll allow it to move on, and it'll slowly track it, just like snakes do, smelling the ground for its pheromones of the venom. But when it comes to birds, it has a unique style. It'll actually bite, use its fangs to envenomate, but it'll hold on to the bird. The reason why is because obviously you can't track a bird if it flies away a few feet or a good distance before it dies. And so for when it hunts birds, it'll actually bite and they actually tend to hold on to the bird. I'm gonna try and adjust. <laughs> we got a good shot of a strike there. So that's just me standing up. That already intimidates the snake. The snake gets very intimidated there. I have to have my friend who showed me how to get here to help me really quick. And we're gonna zoom out. Okay, I'm now going to adjust the camera back a little bit. That is poison ivy, I don't want to push you there.
here. Look at that pretty moth back there. Sad thing is all these spots can have snakes in them. All this rotting wood, perfect camouflage for them. Okay. Yep, yep, we know, we know. Look at that perfect S curve. It's probably hard for you guys to see where you're at, but now look at it. It's pretty much prime defense mode right here. There's really no way you could get to the snake. There's no way I could use my hand to pick up the snake. It has literally coiled itself up. It's dead set in the middle with its head, trying to protect its head. It's a lot like a boxer or a fighter. And I'm not in the camera shot, obviously, because I have the camera pointed at the snake and I'm not gonna put my face down there to get in the shot. But it's a lot like a boxer. Its whole point is to protect its head. That's what snakes do. It doesn't have hands, legs to protect its face. So they tend to put their heads in the middle of their bodies, just like this guy's doing here. So he has a good 360 protection of the head, hard to get to the neck, which is where a lot of animals like to attack other animals when they're hunting. And because of that, he's in a very safe position. He actually has his head S-curved right here. And so with that, it makes it so it's very hard for an animal to get to him. Yet, he can strike from any angle. I mean, if I was to move over here, Nope, he's on me because he's a pit viper. I forgot to mention that. These guys are pit vipers. This obviously has no heat signature, but I have a heat signature and I'm standing right above him. And so I look like a huge threat to him right now. And I'm actually gonna back away. He might strike again as I move. Nope, good there. Perfect. What I wanna do let me get a quick picture of this guy because he's just perfectly in this good spot here. So we're going to get a quick picture. It's funny because I want to do portrait mode, but I don't want to do portrait mode that much <laughs> to risk that shot. All right, so now we're going to move the snake a little bit here. this snake is just too prime for me to even try and pick up. It's a very small snake. Its head is in a good spot. I want to pick it up. I want to get it close to the camera and show you guys, but it's not worth taking a bite for the shot. I'm sorry. It is what it is. It's my butt on the line, not yours. So <laughs> I'm not, I mean, you can just see, whoo -hoo! seeing down the throat of a snake is a very weird feeling. I cannot imagine getting eaten by a snake, an anaconda or anything. That's, that's weird. But yeah, this guy is just too prime, locked, very agitated. I know, sweetheart. It's okay. It's okay, sweetheart. We're okay. I'm just trying to adjust you a little bit here. I don't want to mess with her too much. So I want to get to the tail, but she is just primed and locked, and I'm not going to do it. So stay there. Don't move. You're good. So you can see this. So I'm going to let this one go. The last shot I want to get, I'm going to put her in the leaf litter, and I want you guys to see the camouflage. And then... Um, we are going to let that snake go. So, 20. twist this guy right here, down farther, right there, twist it towards you. Twist. Yep, twist towards you. And now push down, keep going. And then when you get it where you want it, tighten it. There. Perfect, okay. Glad I have a camera camera assistant today. Stephanie's back there helping me. She knew where the snakes were. I asked her to help me find them and she knew where they were here in Texas. Um, so we're out here looking at copperheads. Beautiful. Beautiful snake. Okay. Well, time for her to hunt. Time for us to move on. Very happy with this experience. I, like I said, I want to grab the tail just and, and pick it up, but this, this snake is prime and locked. Short body, 
easy for that head to get around to that tail, instantaneous, and uh, it's just not worth the shot. I know, I know. I know. We're good, we're good. Yeah, getting too agitated, so we're gonna move her. I'm gonna move her over to the leaf brush, and then, uh, leaf brush, over to the, <laughs> over, over to the leaf duff over here. Um, away from the trail, so the bikers don't have to worry about it, and she, more importantly, for this one, she doesn't get run over. And uh, we'll call it good, so I'm gonna make her feel a little more comfortable by using the clamp. It's a very gentle clamp, it has a pad on the top. But what it allows, it's like you putting a blanket on your dog. Helps them with thunder. This actually helps the snake when you lightly compress its body. Don't ask me why it works, it just does. Okay. You're good, you're good, you're good, you're good. Yep, I know, I know. We're, we're out of here. You're good, you're good, you're good, you're good, you're good, you're good. Okay, perfect. I'm not waiting. <laughs> Hold that. <laughs> I'm going to use the camera to show you guys. She's climbing up into this log, and we are going to leave her alone. But look at this camouflage here, especially because the sun's going down. We're losing our light. Wow, I can't even find her in the camera. I have to know where she... Okay, there we go. Man, I can't even see her through the lens here on the screen. I just can see her where she's at. Let's see. Where is she? There she is. Look at that camouflage. Wow. Look at that camouflage. The leaves right next to her. I mean, you would never see the snake now that it's in there. If I hadn't found her, it's got a good shot here now that I'm behind the camera. See how she moved? That was me adjusting. Even though now I'm about six feet away, the snake is not having it. She is done. She has had enough. And so we're leaving her alone. Look at that defense position. How are you going to get that snake now? Look at that. Tucked up underneath the wood. You got one way to get that snake. And you got a face full of fangs waiting for you to come after it. Amazing. Look at the camouflage. I mean, just, let me see, can I put my finger? Look at this leaf right here, and that body. I mean, look at that camouflage. Absolutely phenomenal. Oh, man, what a gorgeous snake. The coloration of that snake was absolutely beautiful, very vibrant. The reason why is because it had shed its skin recently and it gets that very bright coloration. As it as it tends to need to shed, it'll get darker or duller. Um, and then you know their eyes will kind of cloud over with the grayish blue and you know it's time to shed that skin. But the coloration of, of that snake let us know that it had recently shed that skin and it was an absolutely beautiful snake. The camouflage that that snake possesses is flabbergasting to me. I love that word. That's a good word. So our trip is going to take us throughout Texas. We started up here. We're in the Dallas region. We're going to go down through Corpus Christi. Uh, we're going to move over into southern Louisiana and then we're going to go over into southern Florida. So we have a lot left to bring you guys. Hopefully we stay in the wildlife as much as we have been and we're just going to keep going for it and see what we can find. And as always, conservation through education.